stopper. This trail is just something. It is steep. Anyway, I'm uh, I'm not quite to type two fun yet. Uh, type one fun is fun that you have, and then you have fun talking about it later. Uh, type two fun is when you're not having fun, but it's fun to talk about later. I'm probably at like type one and a half fun right now. Um, I am still enjoying myself, but it is a lot of work. Not a cloud in the sky, no rain, not gonna rain. It's in the mid 60s. There's a nice gentle breeze blowing, no annoying bugs, quiet. I mean, you just really couldn't ask for much more. So I'm absolutely not complaining. Um, I'm just letting you know that I'm struggling. I'm being real with you. This is a hard hike, but uh, gosh, it's, it's gorgeous. Beautiful place to be. I'm really looking forward to setting up camp and kicking back. So one thing you gotta really watch out for here is poison oak. You see all that bright, shiny bush up there that is crowding the trail? That's all poison oak, my friends. I am pretty allergic to it. My wife is even more allergic to it. Like, don't come in the house if you've been around poison oak. So I'm gonna have to enact uh, poison oak safety protocols <laughs> when I arrive back at the car. Probably drive home in my underwear. Don't worry, I won't video that part. Probably. All right, I think I'm about as high as the other ridge now. Trail is steep as ever. A little bit of a flat spot here. It's pretty much Poison Oak Alley out here. I should have rolled my sleeves up sooner. All right, let's see if I can get through this without touching that. All right, the Poison Oak has chilled out a little bit for now, which is good. Because if it was getting much worse, I was gonna have to leave. I wouldn't have made it. It's overgrowing the trail. You're having to like basically climb around it. I mean, I don't mind a little bushwhacking, but I don't want to end up in the hospital either. Marker 38. You can see the trail coming down. Livermore. One o'clock. Four hours in. I am way up here. All right, it is one twenty-five. Took a bit of a chill out time here on this cool little spot. Got my camera charging with my power bank here in the two chest pockets. Um, so I'm gonna get at it again. And uh, I think there's one more big hill left to the top of this ridge. And then uh, I should be able to cruise for a while.
Last push to the top of the ridge and it's a killer. Whoa, yeah, this is awesome. I love backpacking. Let's see what is next. Oh, that's what's next. <sighs> I hate hiking. All right, so Sleeper Rock, or however you say it, was pretty darn cool. Definitely worth a little short climb. You can take a little break, great view. The rest of this trail continues for about another 320 feet, if the contour lines on.
it's a weird thing to walk into the woods knowing that you're not coming back out that day. It's like, yeah, I'm just gonna walk out here, outside, sleep somewhere out here. I'll come back later. So it is a bit flatter here, kind of more rolling trail than uh, the dirt ladder I feel like I've been on for the last five hours. You can see it's still quite steep here. But they have opted to keep it pretty flat. I did a little map check back a, about 10 minutes ago and it does look like this is going to descend into the valley and climb back out. It doesn't look as bad as the first two ridges, but at this point in the day, as tired and sore as I am, it's probably gonna feel about the same, if not worse. Type two fun, here I come. All right, it's 3.15. Just passed a guy who came from Mount Diablo, and I wasn't clear on where he stayed exactly, but he's pretty much just through hiking this whole area. Oh, beautiful. They're Schaefer's. But anyway, I'm getting there. for that uh, kind of fire road area. It's turning into a little pine forest. Not that there wasn't pine before, but just a very different feel out here. The ground is a little redder, a little sandier. The road is less steep. Of course, as I say that, I'm coming to another hill, but uh, you know, you don't really feel that kind of extreme elevation change that you do coming over the first two ridges. It's different. Okay, I said I was gonna try to keep this real. So here's real. <laughs> I am blasted. My shoulders are getting very achy, my back is getting very achy, and it just doesn't stop because of these hills. I'm running out of gas. I don't know how far I've got to go, but man, it was not smart of me to basically go out on my first uh, legit backpacking trip in years on this trail. I'm hammered. And every time I turn around, I got another hill to climb up. Sit here for a few minutes. It's 3:45. Oh, I just want to get to camp and eat. I got some uh, Neutralite in my water. Thank you, in-laws. And uh, took some vitamin I some ranch corn chips, so I think I'm about ready to try to get up this next hill. I'm tired. Tired. creek down here is really cool in the winter when it's actually like raining. I mean, not that I want to be here in the rain, but when there's water.
big hills. The trail giveth, and the trail taketh away. Way over there, that should be marker 31, in the middle of those two trees. So this is the steep turn that comes down right here. Right here, at this tight corner, that green road is right there. And once I go around the corner, Look up, and I should see Rose Peak. These are the tree branches of a tree about 40 feet off the ground. I have been walking downhill for 20, 20 minutes probably. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be murder on the way out of here. I love dark woods. Now it's starting to seem like maybe the Shire is right around the corner. A little creek down there. So I just came down this big old hill. I'm crossing the creek. I'm crossing the creek and then climbing up this hill. And I will be at marker 30. And then about one more mile to Maggie's Half Acre and my camp. Who is done with these hills? I am.
series. Me too. I'm not even gonna say it. The wind is kicking it big up here. Let's check this out. Dead sexy, admit it. All right, six o'clock on the nose. I am here, of course, of course. Oh, my gosh. All right, I'm here, it's starting to rain. Look at this little thing, isn't this crazy? BRS. This is a stove. Yoink. Yoink. It's like a little transformer. <laughs> okay, I just want to say right now for the record, Dan Becker, John Kelly, you guys are right. This chair, oh, it's everything. No log for me. So this tent's pretty cool. I can set up straight in the middle of it. I'll be able to stretch out. It wasn't terribly difficult to set up. I only, this is only my second time setting it up. Just give you a little tour here. Vestibule, chair, shoes, cooking stuff. Inside we have the food bag. There's no bears in this area. Med bag, glasses, power stuff in the blue. Dirty water, so your squeeze. And then I've got my backpack and my sleeping bag, which I have not set up yet with my sleeping stuff. Haven't set that up yet because I am extraordinarily hungry and I am gonna sit here and eat this stuff before I do anything else tonight. Ramen bon, awesome. So right now it's 53 degrees. I'm supposed to get down into the 40s tonight, but I don't really trust the weather people because they said that it was going to be sunny and instead... Wow. You want to know how fast it can happen? <laughs> See this? Didn't know what that was until I tried to put my Sawyer Squeeze on my smart bottle and instead of filtering it sprayed water all over the inside of my tent. Which at first just pissed me off because now I had water all over my stuff. But then I realized that not only would this much water not be filtered, but I wasn't going to be able to refill water uh, until I basically got all the way back to my car. All because that little O-ring fell out of the Sawyer squeeze. So, thank you Lord <laughs> that after about 10 minutes of panic, I found it. So, I'm going to filter this water and drink it cheerfully. 7.30 at night. <laughs> Visibility is minimal at the camp. 